Like if I'm going through something, can you can you be like, look, you know what? We don't have an answer for this, but we're gonna pray about it. Like, that's right. That's the type of person that I want. Like I've I've had enough people that hmm, P R E Y again for me. I want somebody to P R A Y. All right now. <laughs> so it's a big difference. Like I'm like, okay, I've had pray. I have had like I've been somebody to pray. But it, it's different when you have somebody and you know that they are actually praying for you. Not against you, but for you. It's, it's a totally different feeling. Okay, Tori, I got you alone on the couch today. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> got me alone. I don't know how I should feel about that. <laughs> So Tori, I want to talk to you. I just want to have like a real, like a real talk with you um, about your experience in the dating field and, you know, kind of which, how you feel about what's going on right now. Um, so first, okay. is it okay if I ask you kind of like your age and status? Are you single? Are you married? Sure. Um, I'm 40, 42. Yeah, I'm 42 um, and I am single. Okay. And how long have you been single? Um, about a year and a half. Okay. Okay. So what's kind of like been your experience in the dating field? Like how long were you in your like last relationship? My last relationship off and on was probably about two years. Okay. About yeah. Two years. About two, two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been married before? No. Okay. 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 So let's talk about that. Um, what do you think about the women that you're meeting like as you're dating, like what, what are your overall kind of sentiments about them? Um, well now, like because of what I've gone through in the past, my, my viewpoint has changed. Like mm. I try my, I try not to continue to pick the same type ah! because eventually, mm. you know, it's a reflection of, I mean, it's kind of a reflection of them, but it's more so a reflection of me and what I'm accepting and what I'm projecting and what I'm tolerating at the same time. Um, and so, like, once I came to that conclusion, like, hey, you keep getting the same type of individuals, they just look different, they might act different, they might present it a little bit differently, then I'm like, okay, well, then that's got to be something that I'm doing. Because, like, what are the chances of me just continuously finding the same type of individual over and over again? Like, of all the people in the world, what are the chances of me finding this same type of person who didn't may not have put me through the same thing the last one did, but to some degree they have some similar traits and attributes about themselves. So I had to kind of step back and like do a self analysis and be like, okay, so what am I doing wrong? Like, what do I need to change? What do I might want to hesitate on revealing so soon and and things of that nature or putting even putting up boundaries that I may not have put up before. Mm -hmm. Like I might need to do that um, going forward and, and see how that works out and also get to the point where like be non-negotiable in my non-negotiable. Like yeah. don't say something is non-negotiable and then deliberate and, and you know, be weary about it and kind of second guess the, the very non-negotiable, the very boundary that I put up. So I, I had to learn to do that. So like Ooh. now I'm I'm it doesn't bother me to cut somebody off and to walk away. Like I'm cool with it. I don't care if it's, I don't care if I've known you six days, six months, six years, or sixteen years. If I don't feel like we're going in the same direction, then you know what? You gotta go. It's not me thinking that. I'm better than you or, or you're this just God awful person. It's just, we're not, our trajectory isn't the same. Oh, Tori, what you said is gold. Let me tell you about this sessions. When, when I create these, like this session beforehand, I was just like, we're going to see what a conversation go. Right. We, okay. we didn't have it like scripted out too much. Right. Right. And, oh, let me tell you, Tori, the people watching the show need to hear this. Um, I had the same experience. I was getting the same kind of guy every single time. And it's not until I stood back and was like, okay, I actually wrote it down. I'm like, it's like I had a profile. I wrote it down and I'm like, they all have this same profile 
to them and ultimately are kind of unavailable. And when I say unavailable, right. I meant like in terms of committing to someone, not that they were actually taken. Um, okay. But, you know, and it's the things that you look at, you know, somebody that's really ambitious, you know, they, you know, business owner or, you know, they really ambitious, got their stuff together, you know, and all these kinds of things. And it's not like I was looking for that intentionally, but that was the kind of person that I kept, you know, attracting in my space. Right. And I noticed that although they had all these things that look good on paper, you know, were they really willing to, you know, settle down and, and do right and, and give you, you know, their heart, so to speak. And I right. found that it wasn't until one day I was like, man, I keep getting the same kind of guy. And I wrote down all of his qualities and I wrote a list next to it. And I said, look, from now on, I, I put about five or six things. This is what I want from a guy from now on. When I see this guy, this other guy come in, um, cut it. And to me, right. when you do that, you start to be tested, right? So it's like, okay, you talk to God, you say, God, I want this. Then you get tested, right? Like when this guy or girl approaches you, are you going to give them a chance? Are you going to, like you said, go with your non-negotiables and still do them anyway? Like, let me see if you're really serious. So it's right. not until when those people started coming and I was cutting them like real quick, <laughs> cutting them, that I started attracting the kind of person that was on my list. The new right. list that I created. And I think so many singles, men and women, keep going for the same kind of person. Um, for the women, a lot of times it's them, you know, receiving that kind of person and allowing them. And for the guys, it's them kind of going after these kind of women. And I'm telling you what Tori said and I, what I said are true. Not until you sit back, you look at it and say, look, no more. I'm not accepting oh. this anymore. Can you see like a change in the type of people you surround yourself with? And you will be and, tested. Go ahead, tell me. Tell me, Tori. Tell me. Right. Well, like, okay, I do believe that sometimes God will test you. Yeah. But at the same time, you also have to realize the enemy also knows what you, knows what you're asking for also. Mm. So if you're asking for, okay, God, this is what I want in a person. I no longer want what I've had. Then the enemy is going to send to you what's familiar to see Ooh. just how rooted in change that you are to see okay well you know what i'm gonna package it a little bit differently but it's still gonna be what you've been accustomed to and then you know okay like when you're fed up with somebody yeah somebody come along all right you know what i don't want to deal with you no thanks things of that nature but what do you do when the fed up phase has worn off mm. then what do you do because when you're fed up yeah you can shoot down familiar all day long but then, but what do you do when familiar decides to knock at your door when you're lonely? Then what do you decide to do? Ooh! Like, are you going to stay committed? Are you going to stay committed to the change that you said that you, you wanted, no matter how long it takes? Or, or are you going to backtrack and backslide and, and accept what's familiar, even though you already know what the end result is going to be? Oh, man, Tori, you're so right. Because at first, you know, you are going to be alone. You're single at first, you know what I mean? So it's going to be so tempting. It's like, it's better than nothing, right? You don't see anything in the horizon. You're not really sure if anything's coming around the corner. So you're like, right. man, I could just mess with this person for a little bit till I find Mr. Right or Mrs. Right, you know? But man, there your energy's got to be open because people can sense when you're not really available and that whole law of attraction, like you're not going to attract those things if you're still messing with your past, you know? <laughs> and they can and also you... sense when you're desperate too. Ooh, preach. And it's like know... a, a flashing light over your, over your head when you're desperate. Oh, yes. And you know what you said about the packaging, too? Because I noticed that happened to me, too, the packaging. Like, the person came during this, you know, test um, period, and the packaging looks so sweet. When I tell you, story sweet! <laughs> it was so sweet! And I'm like, man, I just, you know? And, man, it is so true. When you, you know, reject that and deny that, you're really going to open your your way to who you need to be with and, and going the right way. So Tori, I love that. So tell me, Tori, do you feel that now you are kind of getting closer? Every time you meet someone is kind of closer to what you want. You, do you notice that you're the type of person that you're, you're meeting is like, you're kind of getting there? Um, kind of. I mean, I'm, I'm partially receptive to meeting somebody because like my focus isn't on meeting somebody. Like, <gasps> 
I got my focus is on other things, which is great because I'm not so I'm not so tunnel minded on just having to be with somebody. But at the same time, the fact that I've gotten comfortable being by myself, it makes it a little bit more difficult for me to allow somebody to come in or for me to even show that level of interest because I have my focus on other things. So like, so that's my, my battle kind of like right now is allowing somebody to come in, taking the time to get to know them and, and seeing where it goes and it not take away from the stuff that I'm already focused on. And, and I think I'm that way because I've, in the past, I put my focus on somebody else that it didn't work out and it caused what I was focused on to be put on the back burner mm. and, and to lack and suffer because of it. So mm. since I know I don't have time to waste and I'm kind of trying to make up for lost time, like it's really going to have to take somebody that is amazing to come along and be like, hey, I'm not trying to take away from what it is that you're trying to do and the focus that you have. I'm just trying to help you get there or possibly provide you with an easier way to get to your destination. Because like I said, I've been through enough of dealing with people that took me off the course that I wanted to be on. So I would prefer to be with somebody that's going to make sure that they do everything that they can to keep me on the course that I'm trying to be on. Oh, Tori, you said two other things. Again, this conversation, you single people out there, listen, please. Tori, you said another thing is that how you got your business right now, right? Uh -huh. And I found the same thing for me, that when I said my focus was, hey, God, I want to do what you have called me to do. I want to do what whatever talent, so whatever you give me, I want to help somebody. And, you know, that's part of why I started the show and recently right. actually went part time on my job so I could work more on this show. And mm -hmm. I noticed that at that time, when I'm focusing on that, you know, this person or the people I meet, it's like when you're, when the least that you expect it, you know, you don't really expect it at the time, you know, that like they say, that's when you find someone. <laughs> right. And I find that that's so true. When you're about your business, the right person is going to come into your space and it's going to feel right. It's not going to feel like you're derailed. It's going to push you further. And I totally agree with that. So I think, as somebody said, I think in one of the episodes that I did recently is to stop looking, <laughs> you know, stop looking yeah. <laughs> and let it happen. And, and when you start focusing on yourself and focusing on your calling, that person is going to come into your life. So I feel like you're getting closer, Tori, to where you need to be. Yeah, because like what, what pe people fail to realize is that whether it's male or female, and this just might be the way that I believe, is that you're supposed to be each other's help meet. Some people say help mate. I've always heard it as a help meet, but I didn't understand, okay, well, what does that mean? What is this person helping me to meet? And you all are supposed to help each other meet the calling that God has assigned for you. Amen. That's the purpose is I help you meet the calling that God has placed on your life and you help me meet the calling that God has, has placed on mine and we might have a calling that God has placed on our life together where, okay, you might reach men, you might reach women, I might reach men, but then together we might reach couples. Amen. So, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what people fail to realize. Like, you have a lot of people that are like, oh, I just want somebody to support me. And I just want somebody to support me. But, okay, well, what about them? Like, they had dreams and goals before they met you. That's like, right. What's to say that those can't be achieved and accomplished while you're still accomplishing your dreams and goals as well. Ooh, Tori, <laughs> it is so true. So true. So all the singles out there that's just waiting around to, to find that person and is really getting discouraged, be about your business. Let them that's come it. in. <laughs> be about your you business. Be busy. You have to be busy. You got to be busy. You can't just sit around and, and just wait. Because like I said, people, you know, in this day and age, people are always talking about, well, what do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table? You, you, have, to, you have to bring something other than the physical or the, or the exterior to a, a relationship. The, 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 the physical isn't going to help the relationship succeed and survive. Like, what can you bring to this relationship to where 
when times get tough that I'm not going to want to just go the other way or, or go take comfort in somebody else. Like, what can you bring? Because looks and, and sex do nothing for me when, you know, we're bumping heads or we've hit a crossroad or, or you know, I have a, you have an illness or I have an illness or there's a death in the family. Like, all of that physical stuff doesn't, doesn't even matter at all. Like, if I'm going through something, can you, can you be like, look, you know what? We don't have the answer for this, but we're going to pray about it. Like, that's right. That's the type of person that I want. Like, I've, I've had enough people that hmm, P-R-E-Y'd again for me. I want somebody to P-R-A-Y. All right, now. <laughs> so it's a big difference. Like, I'm like, okay, I've had pray. I have had, like, I've been somebody's pray. But it, it's different when you have somebody and you know that they are actually praying for you. Not against you, but for you. It's, it's a totally different feeling. You know, you touch again, just so many gems in this conversation, Tori, because you just touched on, and I just spoke with someone recently about this, how, which I think a lot of women, like we have been raised to feel like, you know, we, you know, we're the prize, like the guy has to prove themselves to us, show themselves to us. And then we choose them and say, okay, now I'll open up and I'll be here and I'm here. So, Hey, I don't think right. we really set out to say what, how can I make this man's life better? You know, what is it that I can bring to his life? You know, that's going to enrich his life. What is it that I have a value to someone? And I think guys are waking up to it now. Like, come on, you got to bring something now. You can't just show up anymore, you know? Right. Because so you know, those of us that yeah. are raised, like my grandmother um, raised my uncles and my cousins. Like there are certain things that she taught all of us how to, you know, how to wash our own clothes, how to, how to clean, how to cook. So we're not depending upon a female for those particular things that we can do ourselves. I mean, it's nice if we have somebody that does, but that's not going to be the sole reason why I choose to be with you is because you can do these one, two, or three things. Like, it has to be a lot more than that. Like, I have to have a, a lot bigger of a reason to be with you other than the fact that you're domestic because i can i can take care of that by myself exactly. matter of fact with you not around that's less of, less cleaning and cooking that i have to do <laughs> i mean to just be honest so like how can you what can you add to my life where i look at you and i'm like okay if you leave you're taking something that's actually actually detrimental to my life and i not know how to function without like that is one of those light bulb or aha moments to where I'm like, okay, I didn't know this is something I actually needed in my life. Mm. And then now that I know, I'm not trying to let it go. And I think it's like how you were saying earlier, because I do think about Adam and Eve and a whole helpmate type situation. And it's like, you know, I really feel that the woman has to believe in the man's vision and believe in whatever it is that he's working on. So like how you were saying earlier, you bought your business and someone that's going to help you get that way, even if they have their own thing going and maybe you guys merge or what have you. But I believe that it has to be somewhere where you guys feel aligned. And when that happens, you know, it's not, you, you can easily see, hey, this is, we're meant for each other. Like, I really right. feel that God, but we spend too much time, two years here, two years here with this person, this person, wrong people, <laughs> right. which slows down our process of actually meeting that person that we're called to be with. So I think that's a great thing too, that for us not to stop until we find someone that is aligned, that we do believe in their vision. We do believe that, you know, we can get there together. Um, I think it's, that's amazing when you have that. Um, it, is. it is. Wow. I love it. I love it. I love it.